visuals. Ah. Greetings, everyone. Tim Anderson here, aka Renfell, and welcome to the latest episode of Is It Worth It? And today we are talking about Mass Effect Andromeda, which for many people, uh, when the game came out in 2017, it's been a while now, it's been, it's been a hot minute, um, it got a lot of bad reviews, and I still don't understand why, because I thought it was a great game then, I still think it's a great game today, and after having just recently played through the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, I thought it only the right thing to do to jump straight in and roll right into another Mass Effect adventure. So I have been enthusiastically going through what I believe is my third, I don't think it's my fourth, I don't remember, I think I started it a third time and got sidetracked with The Witcher 3. Um, so this is my official third playthrough of Mass Effect Andromeda and I have not played it since the launch here. I typically have always played the Mass Effect games when they come out, I usually play them twice through. I do my favorite class first, and then do a secondary class with, diff with different romance options. Um, and I'm coming back to this again now, several years later. Um, and I remember some things, but I don't remember a lot of other things. So it's been nice to sit down. And I'm doing this uh, as a, a total game through gameplay uh, series here on YouTube so if you want to get more in depth into Mass Effect Andromeda beyond this overview video of is it worth it then you're going to want to tune into that because I've already published several episodes and I'm going to be continuing to publish those throughout the month of July maybe into August depends on how long it takes me to beat this game but uh, we're going to be going through the entirety of this game in that series so let's dive in Mass Effect Andromeda is it worth it in my mind, like I said, hell yes. Um, I do realize that some people had concerns. When the game first came out, there was a lot of complaints about... Um, there were a lot of complaints, I should say, about the animations and the... Especially the eyes. Um, the eyes in a lot of the animations, sequences, and cutscenes were bad. I'm not going to lie, they were bad in some cases, but it wasn't enough to detract from the enjoyment of the game for me. There was no game-breaking bugs. It was great. It, everything worked. The story was there. The voice acting was there. The writing was there. All of it was there. They just had some animation quirks and some um, funky eyeballs in some of the animation sequences, which definitely could take people out of it. But I didn't. it didn't bother me when I played through the game, and, and they patched it relatively quickly. And this is going back to 2017 so if that if this would have happened in today's market of 2021 i think maybe they could have even had a bigger disaster on their hands considering how up in arms so many people get about silly little things like oh the animations aren't perfect um it's a triple a company they should have gotten it right the first time perfection is the only thing that's allowed to be published otherwise your company should burn I am not in that category, everybody. I am very much in the category of people are human. Some things can slip through the cracks. Um, this was not a Witcher, excuse me, this was not a Cyberpunk 2077 launch. This was a, oh, there's a couple of animation quirks kind of thing. Wasn't a big deal. So I think the game's worth it, especially coming back into it now because you can get it heavily discounted on pretty much every single platform. Um, I originally played it on the play, on the, the PC and I own it on the PC uh, but I did buy it for the uh, PlayStation at one point because I think about I want to say maybe it wasn't last year it was probably the year before it was on sale for I want to say like ten dollars and so just to have it in my PS category uh, my PS library I was like I'll spend another ten bucks and I'm not you know it's not gonna be any skin off my nose um, so this time around for my playthrough I'm playing it on the PS4 and I'm having a, a hell of a lot of time there is a lot of similarities, there are, excuse me, a lot of similarities uh, between the original trilogy and this one, but one quirk I picked up on immediately was that um, when you're talking to one of the Krogan in the very beginning of the game, they don't mention the genophage being cured. And so I'm like, is the genophage not being cured not canon? Because I always thought that curing the genophage was like the Paragon canon ending you know the canon thing to do in, in in the mass effect games and yet it 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 doesn't appear to be cured in this version of the game and i don't 
believe you can import characters because they're starting from scratch. So the, there was a, there were some quirks like that, things that don't quite match up with the first storyline depending on how you've played. But otherwise, the combat is still here. The combat is very similar to like Mass Effect 3. Um, the mod system is still there. Uh, the one thing I think this game has done very well is they've just enhanced the archetypes because now you don't only have your archetypes that you can pick you know whether you're um you know you want to be the soldier type or whatever the case may be um those have kind of moved over into this category of um like i forget the, the word they use in the game actually right now but they're like uh, you can program your AI that you're working with, profile, that's what they're called. You can program your UI to give you this profile, and that combat profile can be soldier, infiltrator, vanguard, adept, so on and so forth. And that enhances your abilities. So it's not like the first game where choosing a, a, a subtype, you know, a class subtype would limit your ability to use certain weapons or abilities. In this case, those things have been moved over to this profile section, which allow you to sort of have extra bonuses to using one of those profiles as, as opposed to the way it used to be. And now the thing is, is you can use any weapon in the game and, and you can customize your skills throughout all of these different, whether you're doing like a soldier trait or, uh, you know, biotics or um, tech abilities, um, you have the option to freely mix and match those points however you want. And if you play through the game in sort of a completionist manner like I do, um, you can tend to max out a couple of those. I don't know that I've ever maxed out all three, but you do get the option to, to take those chains quite a way through and you can have a lot of abilities at your disposal. So it's nice to be able to just do whatever weapons you want. Like the character that I'm playing through right now, um, I'm using... For the base thing, I'm just assault rifle, like I'm a soldier, but then everything else I'm putting into uh, biotics. So, yes, I have an assault rifle that I'm using, and I've put a few, few points into assault rifle, but everything else is just, I, I love the um, uh, pull and throw abilities with my biotic. And the cool thing is this game is that you have these combos. So as an example... The pull ability, which pulls these creatures up into the air, and they're all floating there, which you'll remember from the first Mass Effect games. And then you hit them with concussive shot, and it's a combo, and it just does devastating damage. And it's really cool when you get to the point where you can lift multiple targets into the air at the same time and then hit them with a concussive blast that's also an AoE, and it just decimates a handful of opponents at the same time. It's really cool. Um, so... The combat and everything is very similar to Mass Effect 3 and 2 and 3, but they've just enhanced it even further. Um, they've just made it even more seamless, and it feels definitely more like a shooter game, although it still does have those RPG elements to help you increase your accuracy and so on and so forth, depending on the stats you put in. Um, most of the races are here, um, other than the Corian. And if you pay attention to the dialogue and actually talk to people and figure out the storyline of, what, of, of, of what's going on, you'll find out that the Corian were apparently going to be either a DLC or something that was going to be in the second game that was a follow-up to this, which makes me wonder whether or not the next right. game in this series, because they have said they're working on another Mass Effect game. I don't know if they're just going to kind of skip over this game as though it didn't happen or if they're going to continue where this game left off and continue exploring the Andromeda Galaxy, which for my money, I would say, why not? You had a good base game. It may not have been received perfectly, but who cares? It was still a fun game. Make it better. Get a second one out there and continue this adventure because you've already laid the groundwork and put out this game that costs a lot of money to make. Go forth and have fun. Um... All of your typical Bioware storyline stuff is here. Um, the voice acting is phenomenal. You get a great voice cast. You'll recognize many of the people in this game. Um, the story in this game, it's much bigger than, say, you know, I don't remember how many hours I got out of it the first playthrough, but it felt like twice the size of, like, any of the previous games in the series, which, to put this into perspective, I got... 30 hours out of 1, 30 hours out of 2, 40 hours out of Mass Effect 3, and I feel like I got 80 hours or so out of my first Mass Effect Andromeda playthrough, but I could be mistaken on that because it's also been a few years, but I do remember it took me several weeks to get through this game. So I'm very interested now that I'm doing this as a YouTube series to track the hours and see what that comes out to by the time I, I, I get completed. So it is a bigger game. There's a lot more going on. Um, graphics are better. Cutscenes are better. Everything's better. Um, 
this is a game that came along, you know, after they refined and they moved to a new engine, and 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 everything is just again, this is Bioware firing on all cylinders. Um, even though they had the the quirks of the animation and the eye bugs at the beginning, I still think this was a phenomenal game. And for those of you out there who are who have never played this game, and you're like, well, I heard it got bad reviews. I don't fuck that. Play the game. This is a great game. Like I said, because you can get it at discount these days. It's been out for you know four years now, 18, 19, 20, 20, yeah, four years now, five, maybe almost five years. Especially given this, the fact that Mass Effect Legendary Edition just dropped. If you've gone and and played that, and you're wondering whether or not you should continue the adventure, you absolutely should. Even if this is a game that ends up getting skipped over and they do something different with the next game in the series, I still think this is a great entry. It does kind of have a standalone ending to it, so it could be just this one thing that happened, and then they go off and explore a different part of the galaxy in the next game, and it won't be that big of a deal. But they also have the option to continue this game if they want to, because the ending is such that even though it does have a closed ending, it could still, there's there's areas of flexibility here to go on beyond. So, is Mass Effect Andromeda worth it? Yes, you can get it for dirt cheap now on discounts. Why not? It's a great RPG, it's got a great science fiction storyline to it, and it's another great entry into the Bioware universe in the Mass Effect series. Go out there and pick it up today, play through it. Let me know in the comments below. Um, if you've played through this game before, let me know. what you like, what you dislike about it? Drop those comments in the section below here. Give it a like or a dislike if you don't like it. Either way, helps me out. And of course, don't forget to share this out and uh, let people know about this review if they want to take a look at it as well if they're on the fence. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit that bell icon so you get updates for all the future reviews and other content that I do on my YouTube channel. And don't forget to check all the links below if you want to pick up a subscription at Patreon to support what I do here on the channel or you want to join our Discord and other places. Stay safe. Enjoy your games. Thanks so much for your support, and I will see everybody in the next episode of my Is It Worth It series.